Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Pause the video right now to check out my social media, my radio show, and that drummerguy.com. And most of all, enjoy the following presentation. Hello, this is Nicholas. Hey, how's it going? Hey, all good. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, it's awesome to be able to talk to you again. Uh, the last time uh, we talked was about uh, the last uh, Catatonia album, but uh, it's awesome to be able to talk about uh, this uh, brand new album that's going to be coming out May 4th. I mean, uh, I've gotten the chance to be able to do, uh, check this out over the last uh, week and a half, and it's really awesome to be able to hear uh, your take on some good old-fashioned death metal. I mean, this is some awesome stuff. Hey, that's cool. And I just remember that I've been uh, doing an interview with you when I, when I wrote to you and I was Skype because I remember the profile picture there. <laughs> oh, awesome. I'm, I'm glad you uh, remembered me, and it's uh, uh, going to be awesome to be able to talk about uh, this uh, brand new album. Sweet. So, um, with us, I mean, with this uh, being uh, the second album from this band, how did the songwriting process begin for the new album? Uh, it was pretty much uh, Thomas coming up with a bunch of hits, and uh, and the songwriting process in the band is kind of like that he is the main, he, he comes up with most of the material, and, uh, and then we take it to the rehearsal studio, and um, and then when, when it's taken there, it's more like this kind of shell and we like consider the songs to be something that we mold together like rearrange stuff and write, write some riffs too because sometimes maybe it comes with like maybe two thirds of a song and then we together write the write the last bit of it together in the rehearsal room so that's pretty much how it went with the first album as well and and now with the second and it it seems to be a really great uh, songwriting strategy as well because as much as I do enjoy the debut I really love what you guys are doing with this one as well I mean it just it feels so much it feels so much tighter from everyone involved and it's uh, great to see this progression in just a short amount of time yeah it felt like when, when, when we had released the first one it got so much good good feedback from people and uh, and people tend to really 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 love that album so we were a little bit scared maybe we like shut ourselves in the foot maybe we did too good debut album but but for some reason now it feels like that we even have a stronger album on our hands with the uh, with carnage and not not not, not to be too cocky <laughs> <laughs> well i can definitely say from uh, the fan perspective i mean i just i love everything that's going on with carnage from start to finish i mean it's just an absolutely solid death metal album and it just it captures everything i love about the style and it's it's great to hear your guys's take on that and making it just sound so fresh and so inspired awesome yeah it, 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 it feels like we hit the spot once again there because of the of course using the boss hm2 pedals and uh, keeping it really really like groovy and uh, and true to the to the scene and how it should sound like <laughs> Oh, that, that is so great to hear that, too. And, you know, again, you know, just like uh, having that kind of set up using the boss pedals and, you know, just, uh, you know, just writing some great old school death metal. I mean, like, again, I can't say it enough. I really love with what's going on with Carnage. And, you know, it's, it's great to see that uh, old school writing mentality that's going on there because it shows off in the recorded form and it just makes for some excellent songs. Yeah, and uh, and actually, when we record uh, re record for the first and the second album now, we we, we did the formula which we used on the first one, uh, which is recording almost all the guitars together with the drums live. So so you get really into that kind of rehearsal room kind of vibe and feeling rather than everything being recorded separately. So so you get that kind of well li live feeling as well. So pretty much what you hear on the record is what you can expect to hear live because there's no not like too much of things added maybe like a lead guitar that one play live instead of having two two rhythm guitars on a lead but otherwise it's very 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 true to how the band sounds like if we just go up and play so i think that's really cool oh yeah and i wish more bands would take that approach because i really do love that a live energetic band feel that goes into an album like this i mean when every single band has to record their stuff separately and they have to record scratch tracks and have to do take after take after take to make sure that everything lines up with all the other moments rather than uh, just having like that rehearsal kind of feeling where you're playing with the rest of the band you're pretending you're doing the live show and just getting that representation of the band and it's great to see that in this recorded form yeah, ex 
exactly, and uh, and we actually didn't use any click track on on this album. I think we just used click track once on the mass funeral vacation. That was just to get like the the first first four bars or something where the click track is to find the right tempo for the song because we but then I, th- I can't remember which song it was but we recorded it but then we just like realized that this goes way too fast so just to get like to hit that first tempo and then after the first four bars the click disappeared and then we could just play live and let the tempo go up and down a little bit you know fluctuate like like it does when you play live as well yeah, I was actually going to say, I mean, I could see that happening too, where it's like a, you get the right tempo and everything for the album, and then you end up just playing that same exact faster speed live. Exactly, that, that fits more more live, and you actually want to have it a little bit faster, so it gets even more like, like a little, little bit more, a splash of more aggression, and more like, yeah, well, well the live tempo, the, the classic live tempo, it should be there in some way or another. Oh, oh yeah, and that always happens with bands too. I mean, unless you're playing to uh, click track live, you know, just like a, you know, fluctuating with the tempos a little bit. Like sometimes, if you want to play it slower to get more of that uh, kind of doomier feel to it, or if you want to play it faster to just get even more of that aggression out there. I mean, that's what makes for a great live show is you know just like going off of what feels right for the band, what feels right for the crowd, and what's just going to make for a great night. Oh yeah, that, that's exactly what, what I think as well. And a good showcase on that is uh, band I saw yesterday the legendary obituary that played in Stockholm here last night and I went there and might be like fifth time or something I see them and it's just so good how they like they wait in the the ones there so so it's kind of like for sometimes when they do a break it can you never really know when they're gonna hit that first first note again because they have so much groove and hang in their in their lives that which is really really cool it's really really refreshing when like because since there's so many bands nowadays playing with the inners and click track like we're doing catatonia so it's nice to see people who are so like doing that musical thing on stage and communicating so much when they're when they're playing so they can do those kind of cool cool and bold moves oh absolutely yeah and i I wanted to bring that up too you know it's just like um whether it's the work that you've done with the catatonia or being able to do something like this where uh, you're able to show off uh, different sides to your playing how is that for you to be able to uh you know show off your creativity like that whether you're playing bass in a more proggier sense or playing guitar in a more death metal sense how is that for you as a musician i uh, mean like like the di- diversity of yeah. of playing playing both uh well that, that's a little bit interesting because uh i've, I've always considered myself like 70 percent a bassist and 30 percent guitarist because i've always even though i'm active in catatonia and it can be like it swallows a couple of years at a time because of heavy touring and practicing before uh, before entering the studio i always have the guitars ne- nearby you know to fiddle around with and uh, and just keep, keep that up as well so so it's always always somewhere there in between there's all there is always like like it's guitar or bass near, nearby and i and i like to keep keep both of them up at all times oh yeah that's so important and you never know when you know, one thing's going to be able to influence the other like when uh, you're playing bass you might come up with something that's really cool to be able to do on guitar and vice versa so i mean when you're able to have uh, all these different tricks to your repertoire and being able to uh, show that off in a creative sense i mean that's going to be a great feeling as a musician yeah uh, exactly and uh, and now in leak as well since we're a three piece and uh, and i play guitar there i i do the bass duties on our records so i need to be be fit for playing playing that kind of music on the bass as well. So it's kind of like a double effort when we go into the studio with Leek. I need to be both prepared and ready for recording the guitar, which is always kind of like a, always uh, kind of like a, uh, now I lost the word, but you know, like a struggle and maybe uh, because I tend to keep, keep up with the bass more. So I need to really, really prepare myself and prepare loads to go into the studio with leak and then i need to do the bass as well so sometimes i almost forget that i'm gonna play bass because i focus so much on the guitar there so it's kind of like a double struggle there (laughs) in the studio with leak 
if it makes any sense. Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, when there's uh, more that you got to do with it, I mean, rather than, uh, you, you know, just like uh, focusing on one instrument or focusing on one aspect of the studio, you know, it's like uh, when you're focusing on what makes up like at least half the album, you know, with like guitars and bass, especially for the style, you want to make sure that uh, everything's going to be the way that you want it to be, making sure that everything flows together right, making sure the bass is uh, doing what it should be, whether it's following the drums, following the guitar, whatever the case is and same thing with the guitar making sure that that's going to be able to stand out make the riff sound as as uh, brutal as possible and you know just uh, making for the best possible album and again i can't say it enough with carnage i mean just like uh, knowing how much effort that you put into this belt into this album and of course uh, with leak in general i mean it's so great to be able to see that you're able to do all this and make it work out so very well thank you that's, that's good good and uh, words and encouraging to hear <laughs> because it because feels like of course i have like this kind of punkish uh, approach to guitar it's, it's shouldn't like have to sound sound as tight as Steve Vai or have the same like kind of flow as some old Ingvar Malmsteen, you know. But it's more like kind of do doing your thing and uh, practicing loads before the studio, of course, as I mentioned. And and actually on this on this carnage, I focus so much on the guitar that I totally like I had, didn't have any time to to look at the bass before we enter the studio so uh, so I think during those five hours or something that we recorded the bass for the album we actually wrote most of the stuff there and then in the studio checking out some some parts what could benefit if it would benefit following the guitars or following the drums you know so it was like a little bit of a joint effort together with the this uh, studio engineer and producer Lawrence McRory and the band just finding out what would suit best because I didn't really have any time or I, I couldn't focus on both before the studio. So so that was an interesting and new experience. So so how was that for you? I mean, with uh, being thrown in that position where uh, you just have a few hours to uh, focus on the bass, I mean, was it was it like refreshing to be able to do something like that and just do it on the spots or was it challenging for you to be able to come up with what's going to work right for the for the album? Oh, yeah, challenging. That was the word I was looking for earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was uh, yeah, uh, it was uh, definitely challenging and uh, both stressful, a little bit frustrating, but still loads of fun because you got all these other inputs rather than the first album then everything went super smooth it was I think we recorded the bass on like two or three hours uh, just like including finding the sound so so that was like super smooth I had all the ideas and all the tricks in my sleeve already before I entered the studio but but now working working together with uh, everybody in the band and Lawrence for the bass I think that that almost worked even better because because sometimes, even though you're the bassist, you, may, you might not, or like playing the bass, you might not have the best idea. So it's good to have other people coming with feed, feedback. Yeah, and you know, sometimes when it goes along with that, I mean, you don't have to worry so much about what uh, you're going to be doing. I mean, especially when you're focusing on a, playing w what you're going to be playing on guitar, and then you have to go in into what's going to be necessary for the bass. I mean, when you're not having so much pressure of having to worry about both at the same time, and you're able to just go into the studio and just what whether it's more simplistic or just uh, not having so much time to dwell on what you're going to be wanting to do with the bass. Sometimes just uh, being able to take like a take or two and have that be the final recording session I mean that can really work out for the best sometimes yeah I think so as well definitely so oh, of course with all that said and of course uh, with the brand new album Carnage uh, that's coming out uh, the 4th of May how does it feel to finally have this album coming out so soon uh, it feels great we we can't wait and uh, and if it would we'll be up up to us we would have loved, loved to have it out already but of course Metal Blade they have loads of loads of artists and uh, that are coming out with with uh, new new records like The Crown for example uh, they're I think they just released it like last week or something and and loads other I think Primordial is releasing soon and so of course you need to wait a little bit but uh, but we have a couple of more singles coming up from the album that's going to be released prior to 4th of May there so there will be a little bit of uh, teasers and, uh, and what's to come and what to expect. 
from from the album coming up now before the release date but but yeah we, we, 4th of May can come soon enough Oh, it's so great to hear that. And uh, much like you said, I mean, being a part of Metal Blade and so many great albums have come out this month alone, whether it's a Rivers Nile or Primordial or The Crown, like I've been able to uh, promote those albums as well. I mean, there's so many great albums that are coming out this year from Metal Blade, and it's great to be able to see that old school death metal approach with what's going on with Leak and being able to, you know, just uh, get that representation out there and it being such good company with so many great bands a part of the label. Oh, yes. I mean, you can't be in better company if you're in company with uh, with bands like Ram, uh, King Diamond, and Cannibal Corpse. I mean, that, that's just like yeah, it, it's it's already there. A bunch of great bands, and uh, and I think that well, what makes Metal Blade so great is that they have such a diverse roster as well. It's not just one one genre that they're looking at. There's plenty of plenty of uh, genres represented there. Yeah, and you know you can also uh, approach that into uh, your own style as well. I mean, like uh, with that diversity of what's going on with your playing, whether it's guitar, bass, uh, more progier gothic metal, or more the old school death metal approach, it's great to be a part of a label like Metal Blade to be able to show off uh, one of your sides. That is also a label that shows off so many different styles of metal. That is just so great. Oh yeah, and I think that they also have lots of integrity. They just they assign and promote whatever they they like. I don't think that they look too much of what what could be like like profitable or anything like that. I think that they are really 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 into the scene and uh, just as passionate about music as their artists is. So that's really really great. And I mean, we couldn't end it up on a better label than Metal Blade, to be honest. And with that, of course, uh, being a part of such a great label, being able to promote what's uh, such a fantastic album in my eyes. I mean, obviously, uh, 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 I imagine that the live setting is going to be uh, going to be focused on next with the band. Uh, what's going to be going on next with that? Uh, we're actually looking for uh, for a good booking agent as we speak. And since that the album is coming out a little bit late before the summer festivals, I don't think that we're going to do too much much of them. But we're more looking into the fall and uh, trying to book things there and we already have some stuff stuff uh, in the making but nothing that that I can reveal at the moment it's still unofficial unofficial things but we're gonna support a band called under the church in May I think it's 12th of May in Stockholm at this small and intimate place called cafe 44 to to celebrate death metal very much I think it's a uh, good to support each other in the scene since it's quite small uh, and narrow the, the like old school Stockholm death metal thing so so we're gonna go there and, and support them by playing a 45 minute set I think or something like that so that's what we're going on have going on now that 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 is like official live live thing but but there will be more there will be more that I can promise Oh, fantastic. So, in, in speaking of that, um, when you get these opportunities to do uh, these uh, more intimate shows, uh, how is that for you compared to like uh, being a part of the, the summer festival circuits or uh, going out on these uh, month-long tours across the world? Uh, what's the different experiences for you like? <laughs> I, th I think both have has their charm, but but definitely it's very very re refreshing. Even though it's like it's it's more more hard work and it's sweatier and uh, it's more do it yourself. But there's something with a small and intimate club where where you can almost almost standing face to face with the audience and and doing the thing. It's like there's so much of energy built up in that venue, those smaller venues that that can't be compared if you're playing a bigger bigger venue or a hall or or playing in a festival stage you know you never get that kind of like close up communication between you and the and the audience which is which is really really great because that's almost like like jet fuel into the into, into the set when you're standing that close and 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 you can feel the feel the venue getting hotter and hotter for each song you know and uh, yeah so so that's I would I would say that for for this band I I appreciate the intimate gigs more than the bigger ones. 
Oh, yeah. And, you know, like with the bigger shows, I mean, it's always great to be able to get that kind of name recognition out there and get uh, people more exposed to the band that may not be familiar with if they're uh, going to those bigger shows. But just like you said, those more intimate shows, like uh, the people just filling up a small room, being able to uh, get that aggression out there, especially with the style of music, you know, whether the band's going faster and faster as the set's going along, it's getting hotter in the room, uh, more aggression that's going on there. I mean, especially with this band and uh, especially with what's going on with Carnage. I mean, I just imagine that, uh, like, that show that's coming up is just going to be an amazing show to be able to experience what you guys have to offer right now. Yeah, I hope so. And it's really, really uh, exciting to have more tracks to be able to play because, because of course, with the first album the being the debut album, you could only play song from one and you had, like, a, like limited playing time. You couldn't, even though you wanted to play longer, but, but then you needed to do songs twice and that's ne- ne- never never so nice so it's 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 nicer now and uh, and of course more more exciting to be able to offer offer songs live from a from a second album as well Oh yeah, and I think a lot of people uh, tend to forget that as well. I mean, when especially when you're starting off with a new project like this, you know, it's just like when you are just so focused on uh, a new album because uh, that's all that you have to be able to show off uh, to represent live. When you finally do get a new album's worth of material to be able to show off live, that's going to rejuvenate the band. It's going to make you appreciate the older songs more when you don't have to just focus on that. And you're able to play some brand new songs to get some brand new blood that's going into the band. Exactly, and uh, I think it's important as well to get some get some new songs into the set. And I mean, if I if I just compare with the with other band in Catatonia, there there's so many so so many records released even prior than well when when I jumped into the band. So you you have this like huge uh, catalog to choose songs from, and you can change change it up every night if you want to, and and pretty much the whole set is you can you can change from night to night because there's so many songs that you can change in between and so many songs that are yeah, appreciated by the fans as well but but with leak now there's it's a whole different kind of situation if you want to do like a like a headline gig which is more like lengthy than you need to then, then we're gonna pretty much just take, take both the records and then just scramble the songs <laughs> i guess that's how it's gonna be <laughs> so they're gonna get like two two full records <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And yeah, and again, I just imagine with those shows, I mean, being able to show off uh, two albums worth of material, you know, just like choosing uh, the right order that everything is going to be in, what songs are going to be represented live. I mean, uh, just the fact that there is more songs to be able to choose from now and uh, deciding what's going to be working out best, you know, it's just like, it's that rejuvenation for a band that a a lot of people don't realize until you get that opportunity to be able to uh, show things off live, being able to change up the set list and just make for an even better show oh yeah you you can always tweak the the live sets and and one thing that's really 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 like special and that people don't really think about is that in some areas and some countries some songs works better than than others and you can almost like if, of course it's like it's like always a little bit hit or miss when uh, when changing up the set but but yeah for example some some areas might not want to have like two mellow mellow uh, tunes while well more be more eager to hear heavier songs but and then it can be vice versa so you never really really know well what's gonna happen when you when you change it up but uh, yeah like for example this quite quite a mellow mellow tune by Caledonia Idol Blood. I saw some guys moshing to that. <laughs> I think that they were ready to hear some heavier material, <laughs> but, but they needed to do the best of the situation they were handed. Yeah, and I've, I've seen that happen so often too. Like. Uh, I can never tell if they're just trying to be ironic or they just are, are ready for more of the heavier style, but like uh, like when I've seen Opeth, for example, like when they do more of uh, their more melodic ballads, I see people in the crowd that are trying to mosh to it and, you know, just like uh, trying to liven up the crowd and uh, during these more mellow moments. And, you know, it's just, it, it is great to be able to see that uh, people are excited for like the faster, heavier moments that are going on. But, you know, it's just like with a band like uh, Catatonia, of course, uh, you know, it's just, it's great to be able to see that there are so many different sides 
uh, to the band and being able to uh, show off everything. And like you said, uh, you know, like uh, from country to country, continents, just like uh, the set could be completely different depending on what the crowd wants to hear. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you need to be like, you need to be open to, to, to that as well. And for example, I think that if I'm not mistaken in South America, they want to hear a little bit more like the, the heavier stuff and they and they tend to be quite crazy in the audience as well. So, so if you play two mellow, mellow tunes, they will, the, their voice will be louder than the PA. Definitely. <laughs> And, you know, um, and speaking of that, uh, obviously, you know, again, with uh, being able to uh, show off all these different sides to your playing, what is it like for you right now to be able to uh, focus more time and attention to something like Leak rather than uh, having to worry about uh, any other projects at the time? Yeah, yeah, since we're, we're taking a break with Catatonia now in an in indefinite time, uh, I have I can put all the focus on Leak, which is really, really nice because uh, then you don't have to do things like half ways and uh, you can put all the effort and attention on that and uh, and I think that has actually like panned out really really good since, since I've had lots of they can promote us better and uh, and yeah and just get like do things like this uh, doing interviews with for for leak as well which is really really great Oh yeah, and as as much as I do love being uh, being able to talk about uh, Catatonia, which is a a band that's uh, gotten me through so many hard times uh, growing up in life, it's awesome to be able to talk about Leak and being able to show off this uh, great style of death metal, this uh, old school death metal that uh, is just it's so great to be able to see that in 2018 rather than uh, just focusing on all the fretboard work that you can do and all the different time signatures and all the other things that's going on in death metal. Just making sure that you can write some completely solid songs and just make for an awesome album that is going to be represented in a great live setting and it's it's great to see that approach with lee uh, keeping on that continuation from uh, the first album of just writing the best old school death metal and just having fun while you're doing it yeah exactly because uh league is nothing about like showmanship or uh like flaunting uh, like your ability to play an instrument it's all, all all about just finding that you know that old school feeling and uh creating something dirty that it's groovy as well and uh, yeah just f focus on that feeling and vibe rather than uh, trying to make the the coolest or most difficult or intricate riff in in history or trying to triumph over other bands it's just it's just about uh, play, playing raw death metal and uh, foremost having fun as well that's uh, you you can never lose that like that element in the music because then as soon as you've stopped having fun i think that that shows so much in the in the music that that you can feel instantly when when a band has lost that touch yeah, and I couldn't agree more with that, and that, that's why I appreciate so much that this new album does have that fresh and inspired feel to it. I mean, uh, whatever anyone a part of the band uh, outside of what they're doing with League is doing, I mean, the fact that you guys are able to get together and uh, write an album like this, record an album like this, and just have that fresh, inspired feeling behind it, and, you know, of course, uh, being ready to show this off on the 4th of May through Metal Blade, and, you know, just like uh, showing that the power of, of this uh, style of death metal is still very prevalent and can make some amazing music and of course uh, when the opportunities rise some amazing live shows that's going to come with it oh yeah I mean, we can't wait for that we that, that's like one one of the things that we like most about the music uh it's it's of course recording it as well but go out and play live we we, we really want to try to make as many live shows for this album as possible so i hope that we can find a good booking agent soon that can uh, get us out there on the road and and of course doing tours as well not just one-offs and festivals yeah and i'm hoping for that as well i mean whether it's a great european festival that comes up in the fall or uh, possibly even something in north america if that was ever a possibility or wherever it is oh, in the yeah, world being able be to show that off i mean it would just it'd be so great to be able to uh get carnage that live proper promotion that it really deserves and you know just uh, being able to spread the word of what leak is all about yeah and uh and making like this like like making uh, another addition to the to the revival of death metal and uh, and this old school death metal as well. I think that 
I think that is something that people are really hungry for because of all the like you know the perfection in metal that's that has been going on for for so long uh, that they really want to have something more that is more kind of like alive in the sound and uh, that sounds more more human like humans are actually playing it you know and and something with more like raw energy into it yeah, and those always make for my uh, favorite albums of the style, you know, just uh, making sure that it does have that great raw aggression to it. And like you said, it's a group of humans that are playing their instruments, uh, it's taking the Pro Tools and uh, Pro's production aspects out of it that can completely change the sound of an album and just keeping it as real as possible. That way, when you hear the album, you know what to expect live, except even in a bigger sense. And, you know, just uh, having that great sense of knowing that uh, people are able to write in this style and have fun while doing it yeah and uh, it so- sounds weird but in in this modern day of age it's the it's like the gritty ugly and uh, dirty productions and uh, keeping it w- without the without the click and everything and making it sound really really like not awful but like this really 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 gritty production that's actually the thing that's most fresh nowadays in a way so that uh, i think that many people appreciate it and uh, and they really appreciate it when you play live as well that you're going in for like with, with lots of energy and uh, instead of you standing there and uh, watching watching the f- stage floor uh, or or watching your fretboard all the time you're actually you're actually into it and uh, yeah and watching almost as much as the audience so i think that's really really good and uh, and uh, that's what people want nowadays as well oh i absolutely couldn't agree more and uh, once again, uh, I, I just got to say, uh, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be able to talk to me about uh, everything you got going on right now. And of course, uh, talking about the brand new album from League Carnage, which is coming out the 4th of May through Metal Blade Records. Uh, I can't speak highly enough of this album. I just, I love this style of death metal. It's great to see that you guys were able to uh, make another great representation of what this style is capable of in 2018. I wish you guys nothing but the best when it comes in, in to uh, all the reviews, all the praise that this album deserves to get, uh, all the upcoming live shows that are possible from this, and it was just great being able to talk to you about uh, being a real musician, playing some real music, and just having fun while you're doing it. Awesome, man. Thanks for all the kind words. It's been a pleasure. It's cool to talk with you again. Oh, absolutely. And uh, uh, mutually as well. I mean, whether it's uh, talking about Catatonia, whether it's talking about Leak, or uh, just talking about music in general, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to be able to talk to you. Awesome, likewise. And it's been a truly a pleasure.